In today's episode of The Spring Report, we are joined by Chris Fochel to talk about the new JPX 923 Hot Metal Irons. We're gonna do some testing. Chris will give us all the information and we'll tell you guys everything that you need to know. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, joined today by a very special guest. Chris Fochel is here from Mizuno to talk about the 923 Hot Metal Irons, Chris. Uh, we're always very excited about Mizuno irons, and even today we're more excited because you're here <laughs> to uh, give us all the information and break it all down for us. So uh, give us the, the quick rundown here. You got the 923, we got three models now in yes. the, the hot metal family, so to speak. So that's yeah, new this year. So. You're exactly right. So we're always excited when a new hot metal comes just because, I mean, man, the hot metal, is, it's become a franchise on its yeah. own, which is a big thing for Mizuno. The 919, the 900, the 921 mm -hmm. before that, the hot metals have been just a workhorse for in the fitting in the fitting bays mm -hmm. for a lot of different players looking for a little bit more distance, but still that Mizuno look and that feel. So with the 923, we're super excited about some of the things we've done with it. We've expanded to three models. What yep. started as one, then became two, is now three. Mm -hmm. There's the hot metal, the hot metal pro, and the hot metal high launch. Three different, uh, three different sets of irons, but all sharing the same technologies. That starts with a nickel chromoly. That nickel chromoly is a material that we're using that allows us to go even thinner on the face, to give a more explosive ball speed, but all of that in a Mizuno feel. And that's because of our V chassis design, mm -hmm. where we reinforced it strategically to make sure that it's gonna have an awesome feel to it. So you get tons of speed, tons of feel, tons of performance, but ultimately the performance comes from which head you select. Right. And that's what's so cool about the three different models is the addition of that high launch. It speaks to a lot of different players. So now you can pick the right technology to dial in to whatever launch parameters you need. For sure, because that's the that's the element of this I think that we've been, we've been discussing quite a bit is you know the loss and the specs of game improvement irons changing over the years. Mm -hmm. But now Mizuno's kind of going, I wouldn't say against the grain, but you know, trying to appeal to more players and find a club that fits them right that's where this high launch mile comes in. So maybe let's, let's kind of talk about the specs a little bit and you know the lofts and things like that that are maybe different from high launch versus the hot metal, hot metal. Yeah, product. that's one of the really interesting things that's happened is, you know, obviously Mizuno is not alone in making hot golf clubs, making yeah. clubs with a high COR, great ball speed, but everybody's paired those with stronger lofts and right. getting stronger, lower spin, you know, really penetrating ball flights, which doesn't work for everybody. So that's what's so cool about these three different models is now we bring those same technologies, we bring that chromoly, that unitized cup face, that V chassis design, all of those things with three different launch parameters mm -hmm. in them. The standard one, the original 923 hot metal, it's designed just for straight up distance. It's kind of a, I'd say a mid-size head that's got a really good look to it, good feel, tons of speed. The pro is for that one who wants it to go a little bit lower. It's got a little bit, um, little bit less uh, head size, thinner top line, thinner sole. Then that high launch is the one that that player really feels like he's been overlooked for a long time. Mm -hmm. The high launch gives you just a little bit more launch and a little bit more spin, which is a big thing to help that ball land properly. Sure. Well, uh, the nice thing too, we still have Thomas Campbell with us today. He's going to hit some shots for us, do some testing. So we've got these three models. We'll bring Thomas in for some testing. He'll hit approximately 80 miles an hour club speed, and we're going to hit some TrackMan data. We'll see how things go on the testing, and then we'll wrap up, talk about data, and of course, we'll, we'll finalize with who these clubs are for in particular. We've kind of outlined that already, but I'm excited to bring Thomas in for some testing here. Absolutely. It's going to be great to see what he does just because these have slightly different specs within right. them. So a little bit different loft on that high launch mm -hmm. compared to the other. So I'm excited to see Thomas hit these. So let's get it going. Let's do it. Yeah, look at nice. that. Right off the bat, 81.8, there we go. So these are, this is eight shots right now, Thomas. Um, looking at your averages here, we've got a 148 smash on average, a little over 80 miles an hour, um, over 4,000 spin, carrying it 177, total 193. Your thoughts first on the feel and the look of hitting that at a club. Yeah, I mean, it feels really solid off the face. Yeah. Not, the fact that I'm getting a 148 smash, I know right. it's coming off the face pretty hot. Yeah. I'm looking down at it, you know, I know it's got a little less loft than what I'm kind of used to seeing at 28 and a half degrees. That's why I'm going to get that smash factor quite a bit higher. Right. The way that I deliver the club, I compress the bowl, I'm 
kind of de-lofting the club a little bit. If I was a golfer that maybe flipped on it a little bit, hung back on it a little bit, then that would be a different situation with regards to that launch right. angle and that, and that spin and that smash factor. Yeah. Um, anything, Chris, that jumps out at you with these initial, um, you know, this is what, eight shots in with the hot metal? Hit, yeah, so. you know, first thing I'm looking at, obviously, smash factor. The smash factor is extremely high for a seven iron. Yeah. You know, to, as you add loft, smash is naturally going to start dropping. So to keep in that one, four, eight, close to one, some of them close to one, five range, really <laughs> impressive stuff. Spin is right there, and the, and the launch angle, landing angle are really, really consistent. You know, again, as you're dialing back your swing a little bit to be at about 80 miles an hour, it's still still got plenty of pop to it. You're right. So yeah. o overall, I think it's really good. It's peaking out at a good max height. Like everything about it looks pretty good so far. Mm -hmm. So now, as we move into let's let's go into the Hot Metal Pro now. Is there a, a what kind of differences would you anticipate here? I mean, it, the the build of the club is very similar. Correct. It's just a little bit more compact. So anything performance wise, you'd be looking to be different here. Yeah, or? performance wise and numbers wise, with the Hot Metal and the Hot Metal Pro, I think you're going to see really really similar results. Yeah. The specs are the same. The seven iron lofts the same. Links are the same. It's more of a head size tweak. Sure. And with that head size tweak, the Hot Metal Pro is a little bit thinner uh, thinner sole, thinner top line. That that thinner sole means a little bit more shallow center of gravity, so potentially it might come off just a touch lower than the standard. Sure. One. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get to it here then. Yeah. Right. Right away, once I put this club down, definitely a smaller look at look looking down at it. It looks more kind of like JPX forged kind of mm -hmm. size rather than more of a hot metal. Yeah. Hot, hot metal size. Yeah, I think yeah. that's really accurate because really with the last ones, there was a lot of overlap between the forged and the hot metal with the 921 line. And what we, re what we did is we actually kind of locked the size of that for this hot metal pro. And then with the next forge that you'll see coming up in the future, that actually got a little bit smaller. Okay. So it allowed us to not really tweak that and not go any bigger with that golf club. Sure. Right. Yeah, it looks good. There we go. Yeah. That was a good swing. A good, yeah. you could kind of hear that one. It Absolutely. sounded a little different. Mine's leaving the face a little open, but yeah, it was, good. It was better contact. That was better. Yeah. Yeah. Having no problem getting it to 80 feet in height there when he's you no know, when he's hit, hitting it square. It's, yep. It's definitely getting high enough. So we've got eight now at the Hot Metal Pro, Thomas, and you mentioned a little bit of the look. Is there, there wasn't a feel difference really, was there between the two? Still feeling very solid. Yeah. Yeah, still feels explosive off the mm. face. Feels like it's gonna go further. Than right. I'm not used to seeing with my normal iron. Right, yeah, it's yeah. definitely different than you're used to playing. Yeah. So, and when Chris mentioned, he thought the numbers would be very similar and we mm -hmm. definitely see that here. Yep. Your club speed is very similar, obviously, but the ball speed, the smash factor is the same, spin was, you know, there was a minor difference. I think there was a couple shots you left the face a little bit more open on that maybe created that. But yep. um, in general, I mean, they're going to carry distance. We're off by a tenth of a yard, <laughs> and the total distance is off by a half yard on average. So uh, we're seeing very similar output from these two irons. Uh, so clearly the, the technology, the construction, uh, that Kromali is delivering what it's supposed to deliver. Absolutely, and and that's just it. You know, with that's why we have three different sizes of this golf yeah. club because you a lot of different players who have a lot of different demands visually yeah. can benefit from what the Kromali mm -hmm. gives you. And ultimately, what that is, it's it's a good ball speed with a lot of with a lot of launch angle and, and landing angle on right. top of that. Yeah. So yeah, that's where you know if. Obviously, if Thomas is a player, he could, he could pick either of these in terms yeah. of which one works because the numbers are pretty similar. But you know, knowing his preference, he'd lean towards the better players one, a little yeah. bit smaller, a little bit thinner top line. Yeah, for sure. Um, and now the fun part, at least I think what we're really the most excited for as kind of, from the fitting perspective, is the high launch model. Uh, right. So to kind of clarify again, that's two and a half degrees more of loft. So uh, we're curious to see how that fits into the testing here and then and I'll, we'll kind of also maybe dive into a little bit too, the, the, the different type of golfer, different type of swing right. that would be best for that club too. Yeah, I'm excited for it because usually it's like a high COR iron equals strong loft. To be able to see what a high COR will do at a little bit weaker loft, man, there's a, it opens up a whole world of fitting possibilities. Right. So I'm sure excited does. to see the results. Yeah, I mean, I've been hanging around 41 degree landing angle, about mm -hmm. 80 feet in the air when I'm swinging about 80 miles an hour interesting to see what happens to do the same thing with the HL with two and a half degrees more loft and just see what happens to those numbers. Mm -hmm. 
definitely hit the screen higher. I know, yeah. right? Right off the bat, the ball speed. Yeah, really 92 changed. feet right off the bat, that 12 cool. feet higher. This, this is what I love, and this is what I was hoping to see, is ball speed didn't really change, right. but max height went up and, mm -hmm. and launch angle went up. Mm -hmm. That just shows it's, it's a spec change. Yep. Yeah, see, the, I mean, we were, yeah. we were at, what, 80 feet average with the yep. other clubs, roughly? We're already up in the high 80s. I think the last club, last shot was even over 90 mm -hmm. for height, so. We're getting over 5,000 spin now. I love that. That might be okay. eight. 93 and 46 yeah. even, nice. See, that one were even less than 10 yards. Yeah. Separation carry to total. Yeah. All right, so Thomas, the hot middle high launch now. Did you notice visually anything different? Because, uh, you know, Chris alluded to there's a few cosmetic things that are a little bit different in terms of the size of the, you know, the sole width and yeah, the top line. A little bit thicker maybe? It's subtle, but yeah, yeah. it's a slightly larger head. And a couple of things done to make the ball launch even higher. Yeah. You know, a little bit thicker sole, a little bit thicker top line, but nothing dramatic. You yeah. know, it's all just subtle changes. So I'm curious what you saw it address. It's definitely subtle. I, what I noticed is a little more loft. After doing a lot of testing of different irons, yep. I can kind of pinpoint, you know, whether I'm using how much loft is on a golf yeah, club. Yeah. And compared to the other two, I can definitely see there's a little bit more loft. And right off the bat, I think we said a first shot of the day, hit the screen a lot higher. Yeah. And that's what I noticed. It's just mm -hmm. the, the ball flying quite a lot higher right off the bat. Right. Yeah, and looking at the numbers here, I think we were, like you mentioned, you we were talking about landing angle, we were you know, talking about height mm -hmm. and uh, the spin as well were things we were gonna focus on. So we look up there, Thomas did a great job keeping his club speed consistent there, yep. 80 and a half to low 81s. Um, the ball speed didn't really drop much right, with for, that added loft, which is kind of interesting to notice. Yeah, you'd expect for every degree for it to drop a mile and a half, two miles an hour. Right. And this is two and a half degrees weaker, and it only dropped, what, about two miles an about hour? Two yeah. to three, yeah. So really, to, to do that, that shows you're getting an efficient strike with mm -hmm. it. So that, that, cor that chromali is actually doing its job, giving you good ball speed, right. even though it is a touch weaker. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then we talked about the spin really went up, and that's... I know the, the, the golfer that we're, we're looking for for this club, right, is the one that might need some spin. And you get, you know, in this test in particular, we're, we saw about 800 RPM more than the Hot Metal Pro. And I mean, almost a thousand with the Hot Metal. Um, now, uh, you know, and then we move over to the carry number. That drops obviously with the added loft, but the, the carry to total difference, I think, is where we really want to focus too, because stopping power, a ton more of it with, with this club, which I think, I know, Thomas, you talk about in really every iron test we do is making sure golfers know the stopping power that they're getting in an iron, whether it's, you know, it is a traditional loft or if it's something strong lofted. Yeah, and a lot of times at a fitting, I'll see a lot of stopping powers hanging around about 40 degrees. And yeah. I'm like, well, I know in that set, I'm gonna need to add, we might have to stop at a five iron or a six mm -hmm. iron and I add in a hybrid of some sort or, right. This is the perfect example right here. I, I picked up four degrees in my landing mm -hmm. angle. So I'm back up to 45. I don't have to add in that. I've got some extra help there. Not only does it retain its ball speed, it's a nice higher flight. We're talking basically 10 feet higher. Right. So that's, that's huge. That's mm -hmm. a big, big difference. Right, we were talking about 80 feet roughly mm -hmm. on average with the other two clubs. We went up to 88 on average with the high launch. And then also worth noting the launch angle did go up by two, you know, two degrees to three degrees there with the high launch. So, and then Thomas mentioned the landing angle went up to 45 on average, which is a great window to be in. So Absolutely. Uh, I think really good testing here on the hot metal irons in the 923 series. And like we mentioned, and we we're really excited about having the high launch model just opens up the possibilities so much more for the fitting team here at Second Swing. And so I think we see it in the test here really how that how that does it for us. Absolutely. You know, if you're just looking at the numbers and not focusing on all of the numbers, you know, it's, it's easy to get lured in by just looking at the carry distance of the hot metal versus the high launch. But then to understand how it got there, right. that's where the fitter really unlocks that mm -hmm. and really can point out that max height, that landing angle, that stopping power. And that's where this golf club allows a player to go deeper in the set. So mm -hmm. someone at that, that head speed you could, you could actually carry that four iron, that five iron, right. and really you know, go further in, which is an exciting thing. Yeah, well, I think now, Thomas, I think the last thing we want to do before the final thoughts is just get your thoughts on, as a fitter, um, do you anticipate, like, the, that I guess the difference between hot metal, hot metal pro, and high launch when you're in the fitting bays? Like, what, you know, how many golfers do you think you'll see, percentage-wise, maybe, that come in, they're game improvement type player, 
but they need that extra launch and that extra that spin that they're going to get from the high launch. Well, I think, you know, I was testing at about 80 mile an hour club speed. If I get a golfer coming in 70 to 75 miles yeah. an hour, I'm probably going to steer them clear of clubs that have too little loft on them. Right. Because unless they're a golf that all they care about is total distance, right. which sometimes is, can be a bit of a problem because you need stopping power. Right. And that's where the high launch comes in. And mm -hmm. I think this is where we a golfer a little, little less club speed. Let's focus on the gapping. Let's focus on your ability to stop the ball on the green and then figure out the, kind of the rest of the clubs from there. Right. If you're a golfer that has a little bit more speed, then I may be thinking about, you know, you, you need some forgiveness. You still can definitely look at kind of the, the hot metal or the hot metal pro if you're a player that likes to look at a club that's a little bit, a little bit smaller. Um, but it's going to come down to kind of that, that landing angle, that height they're, 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 they want to hit the ball and talk about what golf course they play. Mm -hmm. if, if it's a golf course, you know, you've got a lot of bunkers on the front of the green, you've got to carry, you've got to get the ball to stop, right. and you're going to need a little more loft. If it's a more of a link style golf course where you can roll the, roll the ball up to the, up to the green and have the ball land and stop in that position, then maybe you can go with a little less loft. But right. it's going to be a conversation with the golfer to figure out what their type of style golf is and what kind of golf course they play. Actually, Thomas, a funny thing you mentioned, the lower club speed, 70, 75. I know you guys did a bunch of research on that. Uh, and actually, the, the finding was that when you get down to that speed, you actually need more loft. That's more impactful on distance than you know having a lower loft and hitting it further that way. You're exactly right. That's 75 mile an hour. That's a real threshold for a lot of players. Where if you're below 75 miles an hour, you start to see diminishing returns when that loft gets stronger. Mm -hmm. When you get faster, you can handle a little bit more because you've got speed to generate lift. But really, that 75 mile an hour guy, that's where we've seen it where at even a couple degrees weaker, you might carry the ball the same, if not further, when you get into those longer mm -hmm. irons. Uh, well, Thomas, really good testing here. I think we've got some awesome data here. I think the last piece here is uh, we're going to talk about who these clubs are for. Absolutely. Well, Chris, the last thing we always do with these string reports, we talk about the golfers that these products are for, and we have nobody better to do that for <laughs> us today. So um, going through each of the 923 hot metal irons, let's just start with the standard hot, mod hot yeah. metal. So, um, you know, get into you know the end of 2022, into 2023, what golfers should be kind of looking at this one as a possibility to add to the bag. You know, the biggest thing with the entire hot metal line, they're distance golf clubs. Yeah. You know, they're designed to go a long way. They're a little bit more on that game improvement side of the world in terms of the head size in yeah. general. So they're designed for that player who wants to get, honestly, to maximize a lot of distance mm -hmm. with them. But with that, there's the three models. The standard yeah. one, the normal hot metal, I'd call that for, I'd call the average to, you know, maybe mid handicap player sure. who just wants some distance out of it. Sure. Then there's the hot metal pro that still features all that distance generating technology, but it's for that person who's a little bit more picky in terms of what that head looks like. Mm -hmm. A little bit smaller, wants right. that thinner top line. And then the high launch. The interesting thing about the high launch is to say what player it's for, I'd say that's based off of your head speed and your angle of attack, more so than even a handicap yeah. range. Because it's for a player who wants to get a lot of forgiveness and wants to get consistent carry distances out of each of their irons. Right. So that hot metal high launch, if you struggle with, with some of your long irons, if you struggle with consistent landing and stopping power with your irons, I think that club could be a really right. great one for you. So I think there's a couple of different profiles of golfers that fit into game improvement irons. You know, mm -hmm. There's the, the player that might swing a, with plenty of speed right. and generate almost too much spin, right? And that's where the hot metal iron or even the hot metal pro be great. might be awesome because you can take off some of that spin right. and find it in a more manageable window. And then of course, uh, with the high launch iron, somebody that might not you know, generate enough spin or enough swing speed, mm -hmm. but they need more launch and more lift to get that stopping power. So that's why it's great to see Mizuno has kind of covered all of those bases with these three models here. Well, what I would love and what I would recommend a player to do is to go in and get fit and be open-minded in terms of which one fits them. Because a lot of players will come in and just say, which of these hot metals gets me the right window? Because honestly, that's what it's all about to make sure mm -hmm. that the clubs are gonna perform for you. Well, we know uh, where to tell the golfers to go get fit, right? That's at Second Swing Golf in any of the store locations. You can get uh, set up with a master fitter such as Thomas in one of the bays here. We'll get you dialed in with all of our launch monitor technology. Um, or you can schedule a fitting online with one of our master fitters through a video chat um, or over the phone and we'll get you dialed in with a set of new JPX 923 hot metal irons. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. It was awesome to have you with us and uh, we are really excited about this, uh, this 923 series for, for the rest of the year and into next year. Excited to see what it's going to do in these fitting bays. So for sure, go get fit at Second Swing and get dialed in.